this is the first first day of the new year and the first Sunday of the new year. Uh, last Sunday, the last Sunday of the old year was actually Christmas Day. And I was so happy to see brothers and sisters last Sunday having such joy among us. Uh, if you uh, were here last Sunday, you can sense the joy uh, that was among our midst. And also there were so many people joyfully serving the Lord in various ways. And uh, why were we so joyful? Because we were reminded that Christ was born to be our Savior and to give us hope and to give us peace, peace with God, peace of God. Now, today, the first day of the new year, I wonder we are still joyful or not. Maybe we are a little bit sober now because we realize that even though it is a new year, there is still a lot of uncertainty and a lot of uh, anxiety and maybe fear. So, uh, but one thing that we know among us, all right, that uh, no matter what, uh, God is still good uh, to us and with us. Uh, let us, uh, the sermon today is taken from Isaiah uh, chapter 6, verse 1 to 8, a very uh, familiar passage of scripture, and we are looking at it today in the, in the idea, the message of encounter the spiritual, encountering the spiritual. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this uh, new day, this new year. And as we come before you, we want to just recognize that you are here with us and you are good to us. And we worship you, we adore you, and we receive your love. And as we continue to look into your word at this moment, we just want to submit ourselves to you. And we pray that you will be given the chance to touch our hearts. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we have the next slide here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a new year. It's a blessed new year. And to many people, they may not be very confident to say Happy New Year because uh, it may not be so happy to them because there are a lot of problems in the world today and many of us actually are facing a lot of problems. And they may not know what to expect for this new year. But for us, one thing we are sure, we are certain of, that we can expect is that we will grow. We will grow as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Disciples means followers of Christ. We will continue to grow as we follow Christ and that Christ be the Lord of our life and that we will love God and we will love people. And in doing so, we will become we are going to be becoming, right? Becoming more and more like Christ to become matured in Christ. Uh, can I hear an amen to this? Amen. Are we going to grow this year? Amen. To be more and more like Christ and we're going to become more and more like Him. And in doing so, in order to be such disciples that we're growing, it is necessary that we keep on having encounters with God. True. Encounter him. All right. Uh, next slide, please. In the first verse of Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, the prophet, saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now, King Isaiah, uh, King Uzziah, died in 739 BC and he ruled for 52 years, a very long reign. And during his reign, Judah was prosperous and secure. But at the end of his reign, Assyria was growing in power and was becoming a threat to the nations around, including. Judah, and it was a time of uncertainty and anxiety. Just like us, right? We are now actually having a time of uncertainty and anxiety. And it was in such a time that 
Isaiah went into the temple, intentionally went into the temple, meaning to go into the presence of God, especially in those days, in the olden days when there was a temple, everybody knew that the presence of God was in the temple. So Isaiah went into the temple, into, uh, into the presence of God, and he said, I saw the Lord. He went into the temple and he saw the Lord. The word saw here in the Hebrew word is uh, ra'ach, ra'ach. And this word is not just look see, look see. This word see is actually to examine, to receive revelation, understanding, and to have perception. In other words, when Isaiah said, I saw the Lord, it means that he had an encounter with God. He actually encountered God. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, today you have seen a lot of things. You have seen verses, you have seen lyrics, you have seen worshippers, and uh, you were also involved in singing and uh, taking the Lord's Supper and uh, giving tithes and offering. So you saw things, and you are doing things, but have you encountered the Lord? A very good question to ask ourselves. A good question to ask myself. Sunday after Sunday, we come here into the church, doing a lot of things, seeing a lot of things, but have we actually encountered the Lord? What do you think God will be saying to us, all oh, these people, you know, they are doing all these things, they are even giving money, and I'm just standing there waiting for them to meet me. But they're just happily doing their things, right? Yeah. So it is very important that as we enter into this new year, in order to grow as disciples of Christ, that we keep on encountering God. Uh, next slide. When Isaiah went into the temple, into the presence of God and encountered God, he actually experienced the reality of the unseen spiritual. The presence of God was real to him, and the presence of God is real. It is real. It's not something that is just uh, imagined right, in our mind. It is real. And it is spiritual. There is a spiritual world. We are not just simply physical. We need to be able to enter into the spiritual. And it is unseen. The spiritual is unseen. We cannot see it. Most of the time, to experience the presence of God is something that is unseen. And this is the experience of Isaiah the presence of God is real, it is spiritual, and it is unseen. And it is for this that we are created, to be able to encounter the reality, the spiritual and the unseen reality of God. So we need to live in this unseen reality. We need to live in the spiritual. Next slide. Now, there are many, many verses in the Bible that encourages us and even command us to be living in the spiritual. Now, Psalm 91, verse 1, a very famous say, verse says, He who dwells in the presence of the Most High, if we dwell in the shelter of the Most High, and we will abide in the shadow of the Almighty, we will be under His shadow. We will have his hand upon us if we will dwell, if we will live in the shelter of the Almighty in his presence. John chapter 15, there are many verses in this chapter that tells us that we need to abide in Christ, to abide in the vine. It says, abide in me, Jesus said, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. 
So we are being commanded to be abiding, to be living, to be dwelling in God, in Jesus. And 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, And we all with unveiled face, no need to have a veil, no need to have a barrier, coming directly into the presence of God, beholding, uh, beholding is not look see, look see, right? But really beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed, being changed into the uh, same image from one degree of glory to another. And that is the becoming. In order to be becoming like Christ, we need to behold His glory to come into His presence so that we can be changed and we can be transformed. Now, brothers and sisters, have you been changed uh, in the last year? Uh, are you being, ch being changed? Are you still changing? A disciple of Christ needs to continue to change as we behold His presence. So, a disciple of Christ need to be growing into maturity and in doing that we need to live, we need to dwell and we need to abide in the reality of the spiritual, of the unseen and that is becoming to be more and more like Christ, to be changed and to be transformed. But there is a problem. We humans have the tendency to ignore the unseen. Is it real? We are just living in the physical. And we ignore God. Even the Israelites who were supposed in the Old Testament especially and even in the New Testament even today, the Israelites were people who should be very aware of the spiritual and of God because God had dealt with them in many, many ways, in marvelous ways. But yet, again and again, they forgot about God and they ignored God. Why is it like that? Because we humans are very much living in according to our senses. What we can see, what we can hear, what we can smell, what we can taste, and what we can touch. And if we cannot see, we cannot hear, we cannot touch, we tend to neglect, we tend to ignore. So we are so preoccupied with the things of the world, with the physical. And we find that we are losing touch with the spiritual. We are so attracted by the things of the world. And the Bible tells us that the things of the world are the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And we fell into the temptation of going for the things of the world, going for the physical again and again and again. And we are attracted to the physical, to the worldly things. So that is why we find it difficult to connect with the spiritual. Another reason is that we find it difficult to connect to the unseen and to the spiritual is that we are overwhelmed with the struggles of the physical. Now, when we are having problems and difficulties and challenges and struggles, it is easy to neglect God. But the other way can also happen. When we have difficulty, we actually run closer to God. But it is also very possible that when we are so overwhelmed with the physical, we neglect the spiritual. I think a lot of you uh, knew that uh, last year, March the 9th, I had an operation uh, in my, of my spine. And uh, the months uh, and the weeks before that, and also the weeks and the months after that, I was actually suffering very, very greatly intense pain. Oh, I could not even get out of bed. I could not even sit down, you know. When I sit down, I have to hold on to something. And it was so terrible. And uh, many of you were praying for me. So many people were praying for me. But I got worse. And 
I was so much overwhelmed by the pain and by, by my problems and by my troubles that I could not experience the spiritual. Now, you may be surprised that these words are coming out of my mouth because uh, I have been preaching the Word of God for uh, 40 over years. And, uh, and last year, I got some problem, and you say you are not able to experience the spiritual. Uh, it's strange, but it's true. Because the physical was so overwhelming that I couldn't find the unseen and the spiritual being real to me. I didn't know what God was up to. I couldn't feel His presence. He seems to be so far away from me. I just wonder whether He still cares for me or not, even though my mind says He still do, but I'm not experiencing it. So, the physical can be a problem to us, making us unable to relate and connect and enter into the spiritual. Uh, next slide, please. But the unseen spiritual is actually even more real than the physical. Do you agree? The spiritual, the unseen, is actually more real than the seen. Because before the physical was the spiritual. Now, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created. The created things, the physical things only came later, but the spiritual was already there beforehand. God was there beforehand. And the seen is only temporally, while the unseen is eternal. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44 said, the body is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. We are not physical beings, but these physical beings are temporary. I'm very much aware that I'm temporary. And there will be a time when this body will die, but there will be a new spiritual body, and this spiritual body will be eternal. So the spiritual is more real than the physical. So if we are disciples of Christ, we need to be found in the spiritual, in the unseen world and be connected and living in this unseen reality. Brothers and sisters, are you connected to the unseen spiritual this morning, yesterday, last year? Or even this morning when we are here in this worship service, and for those of you who are online, are you connected to the unseen spiritual reality. Uh, next slide. Isaiah entered in the temple where God was present. Now, even in the Old Testament time, God was present everywhere, but He was especially present in the temple of God, especially in the Holy of Holies. His presence was tangible, very real in the temple of God. And so when Isaiah entered into the temple, he entered into the presence of God and he experienced God. Now, what is involved when we say we enter into God's presence? Of course, we need to believe. If you don't believe, uh, you cannot go any more further. We need to believe in the spiritual world. There are many people who do not believe in the spiritual world. We need to believe that there is a God. And then we need to be aware or to, to recognize that we are spiritual beings. We are not just physical. We are spiritual. We need to be aware that we are spiritual beings. And then we need to connect to this spiritual, that is to connect to God by faith. We need to connect to God. Belief is not enough. Recognizing that we are spiritual beings is not enough. But we need to connect to the spiritual. And in connection to the spiritual, we need to relate. Relate means to talk to Him. Do you talk to God today? Okay. Do you talk to God today? 
And when you were here this morning, or those of you online, when you are connected to us now, have you been talking to God? Have you been, re- have you been relating to Him? And then to abide, to abide means to continue living and walking in Him. That is what Jesus said, abide in me. Now, when we come to church, Sunday after Sunday, it is a special moment. We are making a special effort to come into His presence. And most of you probably will have your time of devotion, your daily devotion. And when you do so, that is a special moment when you connect with Him. But even in ordinary living, we need to connect to Him and to live in Him. And we may not be saying a long prayer, but we can say, oh Lord, thank you so much you know, that uh, the sun is shining today. Oh Lord, please help me. I'm going to talk to my friend now. All right? Connecting to him, talking to him now and then and be aware of his presence and that we are dwelling in his shelter. So we need to live as a spiritual being every day and throughout the day, but also at special times when we enter maybe into the church or into a special spiritual activity. Uh, next slide. Verse 1, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. When when Isaiah saw the Lord and encountered the Lord, he saw the Lord high and exalted and seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now, we are not very sure whether this is just a vision or It is actually physical, or maybe certain parts of it are physical. Uh, Not very sure. But one thing is sure, that Isaiah was very aware of the holiness of God, that he has come into a holy presence. And that it is a glorious being, a wonderful being, and a powerful being. When we enter into the spiritual, we will realize that we are in the presence of someone holy, and someone wonderful, someone glorious, and someone who is powerful. And when life is like this, when life is constantly in connection with the holy, with the glorious, and with the powerful, then actually our physical problems will be in perspective. It will not be that big after all. Now, I mentioned that I have gone through a terrible, terrible time last year. And there were times that I couldn't connect to the spiritual. But thank the Lord that in my mind, I still believe that God is real and sovereign. And I held on to this belief. I said, God, I can't feel you. I don't know what you're up to, but I know you are, you are there, you are here. I just hold on to you. And thank the Lord that I was able to connect to Him relate to Him, and sense His presence. And it is because I was able to do that that my terrible problem seems to be not as terrible, (laughs) even though it is still terrible, but in the presence of God, it became not so terrible. And so we are created to live with God and to live in God. Acts chapter 17, verse 28 says, For in Him, in God, we live and we have our being. If it is not like this, I think I don't know how to live already. My problems are too much. My struggles are too intense. I don't know how to live. But it is in God and it is with God that I found the ability and the strength and the peace to continue to live. Next slide, please. Verse 2. Above him were seraphim, angels, each with six wings. With two wings, they cover their faces. With two, they cover their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. 
The whole earth is full of His glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Now, Isaiah did not just simply saw the Lord high and lifted up and all that, but then he saw angels also. And the angels were worshipping God. And the angels were powerful. Their voices actually shook the temple. When we see God, when we enter into the reality of God and the presence of God, we could see angels. How many of you have seen angels? Uh, nobody? Uh, very few people have seen angels. I only know of two persons who have seen angels, all right? people that I know. I haven't seen angels before. But it is quite common that a lot of us, when we enter into the spiritual reality, we will see visions. And God actually was with us and he gave us visions. And a lot of times, most of the time, when we are with God, we hear the voice of God. The voice of God can be an audible voice, but it can be an inaudible voice, somehow a voice that we hear, uh, don't know where, right? Whether it's in the inner ear or in the heart or where, but we can hear it. It is very distinct. We know uh, most of the time when God speaks to us in a very uh, clear way, we, we will know that it is actually God speaking to us. Now, sometimes it may not be that clear, but it is an impression. It is a prompting, maybe in the spirit. And God can speak to us through a preacher, through a person. And God can even speak to us when we look up to the stars in the night or when we look up the hills in the day, in the morning, and we hear God speaking to us, because the heavens declare the glory of God. And the voice of God can be very powerful, but it can be very soft. It can be very still. But when we experience God, we can expect to hear His voice. And of course, when we read His Word, His Word is His voice. But sometimes as we read his words, his words become very, very clear, very special to us in a very special way. How can we hear the voice of God? Only when we believe in him, when we enter into his presence, and when we connect with him. And beside angels and visions and voice, very often when we come into God's presence, we feel his touch. We feel his embrace. We feel his love. And we feel sometimes his healing upon us. His healing can be very dramatic, but his healing can also be a slow process. And we can feel his comfort and many other things. So entering into the presence of God is a very wonderful thing. Isn't it so? You want to enter into the presence of God? There are wonderful things that God can give to us. I, I'm so happy that uh, even though there were times last year that I have difficulty in entering to the presence of God, but when I was able to really connect with Him, I felt His touch. I heard Him speaking to me and very distinctive, uh, distinctly also, very clear, and these words that comes from him into my heart was so special to me, so encouraging to me. It helps me so much. And life becomes uh, much more meaningful. And when I was not able to enter into the spiritual encounter with God, life was miserable. And it is so wonderful to be able to be in the presence of God, to see visions, to hear his voice, to feel his touch, to get his healing to feel his love and, and to experience his comfort. Uh, next slide, please. But when we enter into the presence of God, when we see God, a lot of times we also see our wretchedness. Verse 5, Isaiah said, Woe to me, I cry, I'm ruined, 
for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. When, God, when, when Isaiah saw the Lord and saw the things of God, immediately he recognized his sinfulness and his wretchedness. And he said, I'm finished, I'm ruined. Be, before this holy God, before this great God, I'm finished. Because God is holy. When we come into connection with God, a lot of times we realize how sinful we are. And indeed, we are sinful people. I am a sinful person. Again and again, we have sinful thoughts. We have sinful intentions. We have sinful behavior. And we know that we are evil. We are wretched. Now, a street boy, dirty and smelly, living together with other street boys, may not realize that he is dirty and smelly. But if you now come to this boy with clean clothes and you smell good, then he suddenly realizes that he is so dirty and he is so smelly. When we live among our human beings who are sinful with us, sometimes we don't realize that how sinful we are. But when we come into the presence of God and see His holiness, again and again, we are struck with the impact that we are so sinful. And we are finished because sin cannot be in the presence of light. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, and your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Now, this may be very strange, right? Uh, this live coal is fire, taken from the altar, the altar where a sacrifice, an animal has been sacrificed, and where the sins of the people were being atoned for. Their sins are being cleansed. And it is with this fire from this altar that, that the sacrifice had been made, that Isaiah was made clean. And in the same way, we can be made clean from our sinfulness by the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we take the Lord's Supper just now, and when we do so every month, we are reminding ourselves that we do not forget that the blood of Jesus Christ, even though shed so long ago, is still effective. And if we will come to God and ask for His forgiveness, His blood will cleanse us from our sins. And we need this cleansing every day. You cannot experience the spiritual if we continue to hold on to our sins. We have to be cleansed from our wretchedness in order to experience his goodness, the spiritual reality. Our next slide, please. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I say, Here am I, sent me. As Isaiah encountered the Lord, of course, the Lord spoke to him some more, right? Clearly. And even the rest of the chapter, uh, God continued to speak to him. And as God spoke to him, Isaiah naturally and automatically and rightly responded. When God said, who can I send? Isaiah said, okay, I'm here, I'm ready, you can send me. And so when we encounter God, when we encounter God, we will hear from him. Life becomes a, respond, a response to him. Uh, it should be a response, a response to him. Life is very meaningful if it is a response to God. Instead of, oh, I just want to do this, oh, I just want to marry you, I just want to do this business, I just want to go to China. But I go to China because God is telling me to go to China. My wife married me because God told her to marry me. <laughs> I 
I am a teacher because I really sense that this is what God is leading me to do. So life is a response to God when we are able to live in the spiritual. When we are, when we are able to hear His voice. So life is a response to God rather than I want to do this, I want to do that. Right? Life is because God is leading me and I'm following His direction. And I'm following the steps that He has prepared for me. Isn't that wonderful? How about your life? Is your life a response to God? Or your life is just simply you want to do whatever you want to do? Uh, next slide, please. In conclusion, as disciples, they will be growing into maturity, becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. Encountering the spiritual, we need to enter into His presence. It needs to be intentional. It needs to be deliberate. Otherwise, we will forget. Otherwise, we will ignore God because we are so much of the physical. We must break out of the physical and enter into the spiritual and then the physical and the spiritual will merge. Don't be just a physical being. Be a spiritual being. Enter into His presence. See Him and experience Him. See is not just look see, right? See is ra'ach. Encounter Him and be cleansed by the blood of Jesus and hear His voice and respond to Him. And this is a wonderful life. You know, this year may be a very difficult year. And even though we may have struggles and problems and difficulties, but when we are living in the spiritual, when we are encountering God, then we are able to live properly as disciples of Christ and growing into maturity and becoming more and more like Christ and more and more spiritual. Heavenly Father, we know that even as we address you as Heavenly Father, we are not just speaking to the air. We are not just speaking to the wall. We are speaking to you, O oh God. And thank you so much that you are delighted that each one of us right now in our hearts is reaching out to you, is connecting with you, and you welcome us and you will be a father to us. Lord, help us to continue today and the rest of this new year to encounter you and to live in your presence, to feel your touch, to hear your voice, and to experience your embrace. Thank you so much, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.